So in this video, we're going to be talking about applications of Venn diagrams. Um, these are logic problems or puzzles, if you will. So here we have the setup. A local restaurant surveyed 250 people to find their preferred dessert, and they give us kind of a breakdown of it. So to start with, I'm going to begin with, I have three groups. I have those who like ice cream, those who like cheesecake, and those who like fresh fruit. And those seem to be the only options that they gave to our uh, local people. So I'm going to start with a Venn diagram with three circles. My universe here is going to be that 250 people who uh, were surveyed. And then I've got, you know, people who liked ice cream, cheesecake, and fresh fruit. So let's start by putting some information in here. So I start here at the beginning, and I've got 177 like ice cream. Well, those 177 are somewhere in this circle, but I need more information because I don't know if they're here, people who only like ice cream. If they're here, people who like ice cream or cheesecake, people who like ice cream and fresh fruit but not cheesecake, people who liked all three. So I'm going to look down and actually hear the last one, 37 liked all three. That's something I can put in a very specific place. I can put that right here in the middle. 37 of them liked ice cream, cheesecake, and fresh fruit. Now the next one up, 49 liked cheesecake and fresh fruit. Well, that 49 represents is represented by this football shape here. Because I know they like cheesecake and fresh fruit, but they don't say anything about ice cream, whether they liked it or not. So this is going to include the people who also liked ice cream. So I need to subtract away the 37 who liked all three to get the number of people who like cheesecake and fresh fruit, but not ice cream. This kind of rocket-shaped area here. So that'd be 12. Our next lineup, 97 like ice cream and fresh fruit. Now again, they're talking about ice cream and fresh fruit. They don't say anything about cheesecake, so this could include people who liked all three. So again, I need to subtract away that 37 who liked all three so that I get the number of people who liked ice cream and fresh fruit, but not cheesecake for dessert. So 60. The next one up, 79 like ice cream and cheesecake. Again, they don't tell me anything about fresh fruit. So I'm going to have to subtract away that 37 who liked all three. And that gives me 42. Now we're up to these single category items. 135 like fresh fruit. Well, that's 135 people in this circle here. I want to know how many of them go in this kind of moon-shaped area here. So I'm going to need to subtract away the 60 that liked ice cream and fresh fruit but not cheesecake, the 12 who liked fresh fruit and cheesecake but not ice cream, and the 37 who liked all three. So I take my 135, I subtract away these three numbers, and I'm going to get the 26 liked fresh fruit but not ice cream or cheesecake. Similarly, with the 109 who liked cheesecake, I need to subtract away from that 109 the 42 who liked ice cream and cheesecake, the 37 who liked all three, and the 12 who liked fresh fruit and cheesecake but not ice cream. 177 like ice cream, I need to subtract away these three items here to get 38 liked only ice cream. Now at this point, a lot of people are going to think they're done, but you're not quite done because I need to define my entire universe, not just the people who chose one of these three desserts. I need to also include the people who didn't choose any. So for that, I'm going to take my original 250 and I'm going to subtract away all of these numbers, the people who liked any of these three. And I'm going to get 17 people liked none of these choices. And that's how we work through these problems.